much. It is such an honor and pleasure to be with you here today and to be with you in person uh, in this gathering to celebrate International Women's Day. But it is most important that we are doing this not just in honor of women, but in honor of all of the people of Iran, people who are yearning to be free, and who the people in this room, the people in Ashraf, the people across the world who are part of the resistance are fighting for the right of those people to be free. This has been a momentous year. In Iran, we have seen, as you've seen on the uh, films that we've watched here, as you see on television, it's been a year of unprecedented protest, sparked initially by the brutal killing, the murder of Masha Amini, who was murdered simply for being a woman, a woman who became the target of the theocratic regime in this country and who was senselessly beaten and allowed to die. But this week, we've seen reports, I've seen them on CNN, that it isn't just women who are protesting who are the targets of this regime. It's schoolgirls. Girls who are going to school are being literally poisoned throughout Iran. We have seen women in Iran who are finally saying enough. We will not be made to behave as the three theocratic rulers of this regime dictate. Now, there has been for decades now an organization and a group that has fought the regime. And that, of course, is the MEK. And it is led by a woman, Mariam, Mariam Rajavi. Mariam Rajavi has been a leader of this organization for decades. And she has been someone who has been fearlessly standing up to the regime in Tehran. But it isn't just Mrs. Rajavi who has been a leader. She is the first to say that she is just one person, one woman, but she has behind her dozens, hundreds, thousands of women who are part of this resistance. You know, there was an American film a number of years ago. Many of you are probably too young to remember it. It was called, What Do Women Want? This seems to be a great mystery to some people, especially to men. What is it that women want? Well, I think Mrs. Rajavi has made it very clear that what the women of Iran want is freedom and democracy, the right to control their own lives. Mrs. Rajavi, Shavi has said that it is not simply the right of women to either veil or not to veil, the right of women to make choices about their own personal life. It is the right of people to be able to choose their own leaders. And she's put together, as you have seen, a 10-point plan that is a model for the kind of government the kind of future for the people of Iran 
that she has been working for. And that includes not just the right to pick their own leaders, but also the right of an independent judiciary, the right of a free press, the right of non-discrimination, the right to be able to worship as each individual chooses to worship. All of these things are integral to the plan of the MEK, the plan of Mrs. Rajavi, and the future of Iran. Now, I think there have been in recent weeks some people who have tried to suggest that, well, we want to get rid of the regime, the theocratic regime. So let's look to some of the people who have been part of the history of Iran. And there are even those who have suggested that maybe it would be good to go back to the old regime, to the regime of the Shahs. Well, I am here to tell you that the people of Iran do not want that. They do not want to be ruled by dictators, no matter what their name is. Ultimately, ultimately, it will not be one person or even one organization that decides the future of Iran. The future of Iran will be decided by the people of Iran. But since we are here to celebrate Women's Day, since we are here to celebrate the contribution of women, I think it's important to understand that any society can be judged by the way it treats its women. And you cannot have any government, no matter what the political flavor of that government is, that treats one half of the population not just as second-class citizens, but as non-human beings, as chattel, as those who can be simply told what to do and not to have a voice in deciding for themselves. This is something that cannot stand. It is certainly something that will not stand if the NCRI and its elected uh, future leader is, has any say whatsoever in it. And that is why it is so important for us today to think about how that change is going to take place. And it's going to take place by the people that we've seen in the streets of Tehran and in other cities throughout Iran. Imagine the courage that it takes to be able to project the image of Mariam Rajavi on the side of a building. Imagine what courage it takes to walk down the street proclaiming that the people of Iran must throw off their theocratic leaders. This is the kind of courage that has always led revolutions. It has always been the kind of courage that it takes to be able to achieve the kind of future that the people of Iran deserve. It has been too long, way too long, that the people of Iran have been suffering. I do want to say before I conclude a word about the court decision that was handed down. It was handed down almost ironically on the eve of this great gathering here in Brussels. And what that decision said was that there is a treaty between the government of Belgium and Iran that in fact says that prisoners will be turned over to the government but that the victims of those who have had crimes committed against them have the right to be heard. Well, I'm here to tell you as one of the civil litigants in the case that was before the High Court here in Belgium, that we will be heard, our voices will be heard, and we say no to turning out a man who is a part of the government who attempted to kill thousands of people.
It is, it is absolutely true, as Sarvi said earlier, that if Iran is rewarded by taking hostages in order to try to use innocent individuals to be able to take back their own paid directed terrorists, that they will only be encouraged to do it again, that they will be encouraged to do more. And so we must say no to that. We must push against that. Our voices must be heard. And those who committed crimes by trying to create a bomb to be able to bring to a public gathering where thousands of people could have been killed and certainly injured, they do not deserve to be rewarded by going home. Let me, just, let me just conclude by saying we have seen almost six months of protests in Iran, but it is going to take more than just protests to be able to turn out this regime. The people must rise up. They must get rid of the theocratic leaders who have been leading that country for so many years. They must say no to theocracy. They must say yes to democracy. They must say yes to the leadership of an organization like the NCRI, like its leader, Mariam Rajavi, who wants to bring freedom and justice to the people of Iran. Thank you very much.